Hey guys, Moonlit Dreamer here. Just here for a quick live stream, little quick thing. I need to turn this brightness down though because it does affect what happens here. Hope everybody's doing well tonight. Hope you're kind of enjoying the little background music. Uh, I may have to mute it when the song changes because this is actually a playlist on YouTube that you can find by putting in calming copyright free music. And I thoroughly enjoy it. I've used this on more than one occasion and it's just really enjoyable. So for tonight's live stream, I wanted to do, I guess, a little thing about life lessons learned the hard way. Because there are many people who, hey Marissa, how's it going? Long time no see, much love. There are many people who look at me and just like wonder how I can be the way that I am, especially with, sorry, I'm trying to get my mic adjusted, especially with everything that I have going on. Um, and many people don't know a lot of what has been going on because I haven't posted it really to social media. Um, let me get this back just a little bit. There are a lot of things I have and a lot of things that I haven't. And the reason being is I'm not one to bring drama to YouTube. I've just never done that. I don't post a lot of what's going on because this just isn't the place for it. There's so much negativity that goes on in life and we need to try to find the positivity and bring it here as much as we can. So I'm going to share with you a few of the lessons that I've learned and hopefully, and it's not to gloat about, you know, I'm so much stronger or so much better than everybody else. It's pretty much to, to help out. It's to help people hopefully find a better spot in their lives and just be able to breathe because it doesn't happen often and it's unfortunate. So the first one is you never worry about what other people think about you. You need to hold yourself to a standard and keep to it. Um, that one was something that for me to be able to learn that was an absolutely ungodly process. <laughs> and I can say that with 100% absolute certainty. Um, I sprained my wrist or my hand, I'm not sure which, but to put weight down on it, even to push myself up off the floor hurts so bad. To be able to bend it, it feels like when you have to pop your wrist and it doesn't want to go, it's it's literally, it's it literally feels like I have to pop it, but it doesn't matter which way I try to rotate it or do it, it doesn't go and it hurts so bad. So that's why it's kind of like got a compression bandage on it is to hopefully help that. It's been all day and it's getting annoying. So, never worry about what others think of you. Hold yourself to a standard and keep to it. For me, that one was difficult to come by. In elementary school, as well as middle school, and into parts of high school, I was bullied for being who I was. And I'm not going to say that I outgrew being a nerd, because let's just admit it, I haven't. <laughs> I have not outgrown being who I am. And I'm going to try to tape this light up a little bit so it's out of my eyesight. Thank you. I still love The X-Files to this day and age. That's something I'm always going to love. It's something I'm always going to enjoy. Um, I, it's not that I like sci-fi. I like the adventure and I like the storyline. And of course, for me, David Duchovny is hot. I don't watch the newer seasons. I only watch really up until they killed the lone gunman off. And then I got really mad and stopped watching. I still refuse to watch the final episode from the original series. But I was always kind of the outcast. I never really followed a social circle. I never, I never kept to standard. I didn't want to become a cheerleader. I didn't want to, I didn't want to fit in with the crowd. I just wanted to write stories and read and be happy and, and just never follow a pattern. And that's something I've just always done. Even in life, people can't people don't understand how I think the way that I do and how I see things the way that I do. Well, that's come, I'm very much tangled up here. That's come after a process. But little things I have found make me happy and I do those every single day. I hold myself to a certain standard and when that kind of falls apart, 
it's it's something of a, cru a crushing blow. I was recently demoted at my job because I've been having tooth problems and because I've had to call in. And that hurt. It was like I failed myself more than I failed anybody else. Everybody else was understanding. They're like, you can still get it back. You just have to get through this process. And for me, it was like, no, I completely failed. They're not going to want to promote me again. They're not going to want to do this. But I've been building up step by step. I've been volunteering my time and and finding little things within myself to be like, hey, you are an awesome person. Don't let this one setback get to you. And I've been role playing again. I've been reading and doing the things that I love. And that has helped so much with my self-esteem. And it's something that we all have to do at one time or another to really fix everything that goes down. And you just have to put yourself in this place, make up your rules, your moral code, and follow it. And each time you do that, it's going to be something that builds... I am so sorry, I forgot to turn off my notifications. That fucking hurts really bad. Sorry, let me uh, turn those down. There we go. You just really have to follow that standard and stick to it. And truthfully... Once you start doing it, it becomes a lot easier. And never really worry about what other people are going to think of you because of it. Because what do they know? They haven't lived your life. They haven't been in your shoes. And until they have, many you, they can't say anything against that. And many people do think that way. It's just finding them in this day and age is a little bit difficult. I'm trying not to bend my hand, but it's really not working. Okay, second one. Stop worrying about what you can't control. If it isn't happening, then let it go. Again, that one is not easy for somebody like me who does obsess over everything. And I mean everything. Every little detail has to be put into place or I... It's not that I flip out, but I'm not comfortable. I'm a person who loves to plan. I'm a person who doesn't really do many spontaneous things. But my father, one night when I was very stressed out over things that I thought might happen or things that I was so sure were going to happen, he sat me down and said, stop worrying about what you can't control. If one person is doing something and you know you can't fix it, then why are you expanding your energy trying to, trying to do something about it when you know that you can't? Let this person do what they're going to do and you do what you're going to do. And if it isn't happening, if the bad thing or the stressful thing isn't happening to you and you've done what you can to try to help it, you can't really take it into yourself. Especially if it has nothing to do with you in the first place. That was one I have, t I have really much taken to heart. And people will say because of that that I'm cold. They'll say that because of that I'm callous. And that couldn't be further from the truth. It's not that I don't feel and it's not that I'm not upset about it, but I'm not letting it eat me away because if I can't fix it at this point in time, but I can plan ahead to try to find a way to fix it, then that's all there is to it. If it's not going to be able to be fixed in the here and now, uh, but you can take the steps leading up to it, hey, so much the better. Number three, do something to better yourself. Take up tasks, find a new hobby, make yourself over. Here soon, I'm actually going to be dyeing my hair. Um, it's not going to be this brownish color anymore. It's actually going to be kind of a reddish brown color, and I've had it before. It's a very, very beautiful color. I might even try to have her put some blonde in it, even though I don't look good as a total blonde. I think I'm going to have her do that just because I loved it. So you want to take up tasks. You want to find little hobbies that interest you. For me, um, little hobbies that I like to do, I like to go outside every day and I like to water my plants, especially because it's so hot outside. They need that extra hydration to keep themselves going. I like to go outside and pick up sticks. I like to clean up my room. Uh, little hobbies that I like to do, I like to sew. And many people look at me and just be like, that's so not... It's, it's so like 1940s, it's so housewife, but I've been creating a pattern um, for an altar cloth. I, am, I do 
practice witchcraft. And I'm making this beautiful sunflower altar cloth because I'm a green witch, I work with plants. And there's nothing better than that. Why did my stream die? I forgot my stream dies because it hates my cell phone. I am an idiot. I can't believe that happened. All right, I'm gonna try to find a place to... Okay, if I set it here, computer, are you going to get mad at me? Or are you gonna calm down just a little bit? Watch it since I set it here, it's gonna get mad at me. <laughs> I love my computer. I really do, but there are times that it just kind of aggravates me. Just a little bit. Anyway, find like a new hobby. For me, I, d I didn't think that I liked working with my hands, or at least woodworking, or doing different things like that until I got into high school and we were allowed to use shop tools and woodwork. I actually made a crow, which I don't know if I can pull it out without breaking something. Oh my god, I actually got it and I didn't break anything. But I made a crow out of wood. It's kind of been scarred over the years. But it is an actual crow, as you can see from the outline. The crow has always been my favorite movie, and I made this out of a piece of wood about as big around as my- about as thick as my finger. And for me, that was fun. So I've always tried to do little things with woodworking when I've been able to. I saw a video about a guy who built a little shack at a pallet wood, and I would love to do that. I'm just, uh, and I actually did try to do that, but it didn't work out because I didn't have enough pallet wood, and the wood I had was getting rained on, and it was kind of breaking apart. So unfortunately, that just didn't work out. But I do love little miniature things, and I would love to do those as well. I love cooking, and I love baking, so I've been putting my energy into those as well and making little things that make people happy. I have a medieval cookbook called A Song of Fire and Ice. It's a Game of Thrones cookbook. And I've made a beef and bacon pie. I've made these little apple cakes that are so delicious and fattening because they have a lot of butter in them. They also have brown sugar, <laughs> but they're delicious. And so I found little tasks just to, just to see if I could do them, and then it was a way of just bringing my confidence up. And so, from there, it just kind of skyrocketed. From there, it leads me to the next one, uh, to number four. Do what you love and don't hide it. For me, I love doing witchcraft. I love doing little spells, especially when it's about protection and it's about healing. It's about, it's about personal growth. It's about self-love. I've been practicing since I was 16, and from there, I just kind of grew as a person. There's no right and wrong way of doing it. No matter how much people will try to tell you that there is, there actually is not. You can be any kind of person that you want to be, and you can do any kind of thing that you want to do. For me, it's just, it's a matter of inner peace, and when I'm practicing, it's part of who I am. Granted, I don't do it with people watching, because for me, that's a personal experience. I'm solitary for a reason. As I said, I love sewing, and even though it kind of feels, it, well, not feels, it's kind of like people would tell me it's a 1950s housewife. Who cares? I get to make these beautiful little creations, I get to put things together, and I get to make something beautiful. And for me, there's nothing better than that. That's one of those life lessons I learned the hard way of, again, not taking into account what people think about it. Because if I'm enjoying it, what does it matter how they see it? They're not having to do it or go through with it. So I just take opinions like that with a grain of salt because if they're not going to go through with it then what does it matter what I'm doing what does it matter if they enjoy it or not I don't have to please somebody to be able to do that um <laughs> that actually leads me into something funny is once upon a time um I confessed to somebody about the things that I like to do that I like to clean which kind of seems strange for many people but when you can take a dirty area and make it beautiful again. That is an inner strength that people do not realize. Especially when I lived with my ex who claimed that the house was the way he was because of his ex leaving him and he didn't have time to do it because he was working. Turns out he was just really, really disgusting. 
your sister does witchcraft so you understand about how wonderful and in, like enlightening it can really be. And it is true, it can be really enlightening for a lot of people. And it's not everybody's cup of tea. And do not take Harry Potter as an authority figure on that because it really isn't. <laughs> But I confess to somebody the things that I like to do, and in a final message to me, they told me straight up that I was a supernaturally boring person. And I was like, wow, so just because the things that I like to do are not the things that you like to do, suddenly I'm just this very boring person who's just uninteresting, who has nothing going for her. Wow, thank you for your input. I mean, I, I still take that kind of laughing, that I am a boring person. Why? Because I don't go out and party every weekend. Because I don't go to clubs. Because I don't, I don't hang out with a group of friends and try to be the center of attention. That I don't, that I don't post stupid videos of myself getting drunk or grinding on some guy in a bar. That I'm at home, I'm doing the things that I love to do, and yet that makes me a boring person. That as an introvert, I would rather be at home in a calming place than doing anything else. And I still laugh at that to this day. And that's part of the reason I don't care what people think of me, because I'm not going to live up to some people's expectations, and I don't want to try to. I got so tired of doing that and it leading nowhere that I was finally like, well, fine, I'm going to do it myself and I'm going to do this my own way. And if people don't like it, they don't have to be around me. Thankfully, I have a bunch of friends who understand that if they invite me somewhere and I'm not comfortable enough to go out, that they are understanding in that respect. And the thing is, is people like to hobby shame. And for me, it's, it's, it's something that I can't do. I can't put myself in somebody else's shoes, and I can't see the things from their perspective. Many people like to uh, play D&D, &D, and truthfully, I love to play D&D. &D. I have short-term memory problems, which means I can't memorize a bunch of rules and a bunch of spells and do a bunch of other things, but it doesn't mean I don't enjoy it, and it doesn't mean I'm going to look down on people who actually do like to do those kinds of things. I mean, I think it's interesting and wonderful that they can. My brain capacity is not that Hi. But what most people don't know about me is that when it rains, I like to take a bath by candlelight. I just like to listen to the rain. I like to soak in the tub and I just like to enjoy the peace. And then when I get out, I like to fix myself a couple of pieces of toast with some butter on it. I fix myself a cup of tea. I sit down uh, with a blanket around my legs and my cup of tea in hand, and I like to listen to old radio shows. Now, for many who don't know about old radio shows, there is one that is my personal favorite, and he's called Richard Diamond, Private Detective. And these were stories that were back before they had television. It was little stories that people would voice over and they'd use different sound effects to simulate like they're actually doing this. And the dramas were so sometimes unreal. That's how Bat- or not Batman, that's how Superman got started and a lot of other ones. Um, but Richard Diamond, Private Detective, he is the epitome of an asshole. And I'm not even gonna lie about that. He is sarcastic, he's outspoken, he is not afraid to go into a situation. And he really quickly gets to the heart of the matter. He's not a person you can, you can BS into doing something. Um, in one of the episodes, and I mean this, that he was a literal jerk. He gets called out to um, a house on either Long Island, I think it's Long Island, in New York, because this is where all of this takes place. And the guy, one of the people, he's not involved, but he's kind of like a background player, opens the door and he's drunk to the point that you can smell the alcohol coming off of him. And he says, my name is X. And then he goes, boo, trying to scare the guy. And the breath blows in the guy's face. And Richard Diamond looks at this guy blatantly and says, blow your boo someplace else. Your breath could wither along. And I'm just sitting there going, wow, that is absolutely horrible. But at the same time, it makes me laugh because this guy just says anything that comes to his mind. And he also talks down to one of the one of the 
police officers. So from there, it just kind of gets crazy. But I enjoy that. I also enjoy watching K-dramas, which are Korean dramas. As I mentioned in my last live stream, one of the ones that I watch is called Who Are You? And you can find this on YouTube. You can also download an app, which I have to bring up real quick. It's called Vicky, V-I-K-I, and then Rakuten, which is R-A-K-U-T-E-N. And I know this is on Android. If you have an iPhone, I couldn't really tell you. But I get to watch it through there. It's You have to watch it with subtitles because unless you speak Korean, which I do not, you're not going to understand it. The basic premise is absolutely wonderful. It's about a girl who is bullied, who tries to commit suicide. She's somehow saved. She loses her memory and ends up going into a life the life of a girl who looks just like her and it's about the adventure that happens along the way it's absolutely wonderful and I've watched it over and over several times they also have a bunch of other ones that I've seen on Facebook just little clips of that I'm gonna start watching after I again watch this one but I also love history I love I love looking up things about serial killers, and maybe one day I'll do, like, if not podcasts, I'll do, like, a little live stream about them on maybe some other channel. I don't know. But I like looking it up and reading their backstories and reading their histories and laughing about some of them because it's just like, wow, some of these people were never caught until years later. Some of them are caught doing stupid stuff. And their mindset to me is just really interesting. And history for me is interesting. Mine is the Tudor period in England surrounding King Henry VIII. So about 1500s, I would say. And many people would shame me about that because it's not their cup of tea. But again, that goes hand in hand of not listening to what people say and taking their opinions with a grain of salt. It's, it's been a work in progress of doing that myself, but I think from that I've grown. Of course, if family members say something, I'm going to be affected by that. But in general, I just try to... I'm going to go ahead and change this in a second. I'm just going to do me, and I'm going to enjoy the ride along the way. Another one is giving back when you can. I have found that doing things and helping others gives me such a good opinion of myself. Um, up until recently when I found out I have had heart trouble and a lot of other problems, I was mowing my neighbor's lawn and pulling weeds and doing different stuff like that. It made me feel like a really good person, like I was doing something absolutely worthwhile. And being able to give back also gives you a favorable, favorable opinion elsewhere, and it gives people, it puts people in your corner who can come to understand you. It's why I also volunteer for projects at work and hours at work, so that way I can become somebody reliable. Of course, as of recently, with my tooth, I'm not able to do that. But they've been really understanding, and I appreciate that. So definitely giving back... Um, cause I'm not in an outgoing person, it's being me having to push myself to be able to do that. And yet, I, I have to say that it's, it's one of those feelings that never goes away. Uh, finding your happy place is another hard lesson, cause I've always tried to just live in reality, and I'm gonna change that too. I'm trying to find like a really good one. Oh wait, I think this one is really good. Don't quote me on that one. Skip ahead. Yeah, that'll be all right. But finding and building your happy place has been something that for me, it just, it takes, what? So finding and building your happy place is one of those that it, it kind of hits home for me. I've always been one to um, do things and live in kind of the moment and not really look around and try to 
try to take myself out of it. And in recent years, I found myself able to just let go and daydream. And it's something that we all have to do really to keep our sanity and to keep it going. I've made my room something of like a haven. It's, I have Christmas lights for lights. I have a desk lamp. I don't have a big lamp because I don't like the overall brightness of it. It's just, it, it takes away from the natural calming atmosphere. I also try to keep my room cool because if I get too overheated, then I get sick and it doesn't end well for anybody. So you definitely need to find a happy place and make it as wonderful as possible. Bringing me to another point of that you can, and it's never a bad thing, is cutting off toxic people in your life. I have taken a road down that when I've been through so many bad relationships and so many, so many failed friendships and... It's, it's hard, it can sometimes be defeating, but it doesn't mean that you have to stick around for that just because they've done things for you. Um, if they're not helping you to find and be a better person, and they're not helping you down a good path, then you absolutely can cut these people off and cut them out of your life. That for me has been hard because I'm always a person that wants people to be in my life so that way I'm not lonely. And loneliness is actually a condition that we all suffer from, that we all have to kind of take into account, that at one point or another, there's not always going to be somebody around. There's not always going to be somebody there to help us through. So we have to be okay with being alone and be okay with... I guess finding that peace within us and taking off the people who aren't going to do that for us and including family members that's the hardest part but just because they're blood doesn't mean you have to they don't have they they're going to be a part of your life you don't have to suffer through that and it also brings me to my last point that if somebody including a friend is not appreciating you then definitely walk away um this last time around, I had somebody who was a good friend, who wasn't really talking to me as much as I would have liked, and it was like he was talking to everybody else but me, and yet he said he still wanted to be my friend, he still wanted to, you know, talk and game and do all this other stuff, but he wasn't trying to be a part of that, and I tried to talk to him about it on a couple of different occasions, and I finally just got fed up and was like, you know what, you can message everybody else, and you can get into Discord with your other friends and you can do all of these other things but when it comes to me it's like you're not even trying you're not trying to um help build something here or at least a deep lasting friendship to where we can continue to do things so finally I was like you know what I'm not gonna do that anymore and I walked away and it was the hardest thing to do because me and him and his friend had gamed and done a bunch of other things and I mean it was great it was like we were all really great friends but then things changed and when it changed it was horrible and I stayed for as long as I could and I did so many of the things that I could but at the end of the day I wasn't going to suffer through that just so I wouldn't be alone just so I wouldn't have people in my life I knew it wasn't going to change and then afterwards I suffered a lot of not necessarily abuse, but harassment, because I had upset him to the point that he was not wanting to game, he wasn't wanting to do anything, he was supposedly upset with me, and it's like, I talked to him months before, I tried to figure this out, and I tried to get it done, and he didn't want to hear about it. He didn't want to listen to anything that I had to say, so finally I was like, you know what? Fine. If that's how things are going to be, then I'm just, I'm not going to be here. And yet he didn't try to help the situation. And as much as it hurt, and as much as, you know, it still hurts of walking away from what had been a good friendship, I knew that I had to do it. It wasn't that, you know, I didn't care. I was not being appreciated, and I was not feeling appreciated. And even though he had bought me games on Steam and done a bunch of other things, it was just in the end, being left out was not enough. And so that's been the hardest one for me is finding is finding the strength to walk away and knowing you're going to land somewhere better. 
And I guess for me, I have landed somewhere better. I've been able to focus more on my health and focus more on my job and my hobbies and the things I like to do. And I encourage everybody to do that, that even though it's going to be hard and you're going to feel more alone than you probably have in a long time, to look at yourself and look at the things that you want to do and the things that you need to do and find your happiness and be able to fix that for yourself. It's one of those life lessons that it's the hardest to do, but the minute you have done it, you can easily repeat it elsewhere. And you will repeat it as many times as you need to until you feel secure. For me, I found at least a little bit of happiness, but, you know, it is what it is. It is 5 o'clock in the morning, and I have to be up in about 3 hours to call the dentist, because I forgot what time I have an appointment. Whoops. So I'm gonna get on that, but I thank you guys for sticking with me through this very long live stream. I didn't mean to be live this long, but it was just something that happened. But as always, guys, I hope you have a good night, much love, and I will see you all in the next live stream. Bye, guys!